team, thanks for joining me for today's session. In today's session, I'm going to specifically work on strategies such as group, copy, and duplicate. The mission for today's uh, lesson is to explain to you how to modify an existing build. Sometimes a project that you're working on can benefit from repeated tasks over and over again. And so I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing over and over again, but we're going to save time in that process. Your teacher may give you an assignment where you are given the task to modify an existing build. Let me go ahead and head into this project right here. I had this project done uh, to perfection and I didn't wanna ruin my existing project. So I clicked on the gear and I clicked where it said duplicate, which means that I now have a copy of this flexible gecko. And that's what we're gonna work with today. I'm gonna click one time in order to open that project. I'm gonna come over to the right and I'm gonna click right here where it says tinker this. My desire for this project is to add texturized skin to this flexible gecko. And I've already done a portion of that work already, but I've got a few sections in this area and then over here that do not have that texture. So I'm gonna pick up where I left off and I'm gonna to explain to you the process that I use to make this happen. One tool that I think that's important when I'm working in Tinkercad is the pad lock or just the lock feature. I'm gonna click one time on the gecko to illuminate or select just the gecko. And I know that I've selected the gecko because you can see this microscopic blue line that's illuminating some areas of this gecko. So I know that that's what I've selected. Another reason why I know it's what I've selected is that sand uh, is the solid color. And so this is the object that I have chosen. Over here I have this padlock and I'm gonna click the lock button one time. Now you can see that purple exterior. And what happened just now is that I've locked it into position and it's not going to scoot all over the place. Let me explain. If I don't lock it into position and I'm, oh no, oh, did you see what I just did? I didn't wanna move that one. Let me click the undo button so I can bring it back to its spot where it belongs. And then I'm gonna click that padlock again. So you can change your mind. You don't have to leave it locked forever. Just select that item and then choose the padlock up here if you want something to move about. When you hover your mouse in that area, you'll also notice that the keyboard commands appear. So control L is another option. You can control L to lock it and control L again in order to unlock it. Let me move on to the next task. In order to perform this task, I brought in a cylinder from the side and the cylinder was definitely not that size when I started. And I have lots of cylinders that are exactly the size that I want. After I have perfected the cylinder so that it's exactly the size that I want, it's cumbersome to have to bring in another cylinder and another cylinder and another cylinder. So that way I have 35 different cylinders that are exactly the same size. That would get cumbersome after a while and it would take way too long. So that's not the most efficient way for me to use my time. Let me delete those guys. Let me scoot this one out here and let me explain the process of copying and pasting or duplicating so that I have lots of these to choose from and then I can just drag them over one at a time or two at a time or three at a time in order to save myself some time. So let me click one time on this cylinder because it's the object that I want copied and pasted. And I'm gonna come all the way over here to the top, top, top left. And this very first symbol means copy. Control C on my keyboard would do the same thing. Mrs. Clover, I clicked it and nothing happened. Yes, I know, it's technically in your clipboard until you choose paste. So the very second one is paste. Control V for victory is paste. And when I click that, you'll notice how another one just appeared uh, a short distance away from that first one. So now I have two. Let me click over here. The other option is duplicate. So if I wanna duplicate it, it's very similar to copy and paste, but duplicate means that it shows up in exactly the same location. So I want it right there on top of the other one. Another way to speed this process up 
Okay, so previously you can click on it one time. You can go over to copy and then paste or using your keyboard, control C for copy, control V for paste, V, 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 V. In a very short time, I could have 25 of them show up as long as you keep hitting or clicking rather, control V, control V, control V, control V, then you can just make multiple copies. You don't have to copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste over and over again. Once you've copied it, it's available for you in that clipboard and then you can continue to copy. So I have several, oh, oh, look at that. See what I did? I made a mistake. See how I'm, I'm elongating it? Oh, it's now distorted. It's not fantastic. I can just easily click uh, undo on my keyboard or I can just delete it altogether. Click and then backspace. It's gone. The problem has disappeared. So I just keep coming back to this stack over and over again and then I've got lots of them to choose from several of them keep coming out. So you can copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste one at a time. There's another pathway that you can take if you wanted to speed that up a little bit more. Maybe you wanted all three of these to be copied and pasted. You'll notice how I scooted over to the left and then I drew a rectangle that touched all of those objects. All three of them have been selected. Now on my keyboard, I'm going to do control C for copy, control V for victory. And you'll notice that I have six. Three times two is six. Three times three is nine. Three times four is 12. So each time I click control V, you'll notice that I have a series of those same objects appearing over and over again. That might be helpful to you if you have several objects that you need to bring into a project. And then I can either scoot these in one at a time or I can cluster them. And if I wanna bring in two at a time or three at a time or four at a time, I can do that. In a project like this, I need to be really careful because this is a flexible project. If I interfere with those sections or those joints, then I've ruined that particular area. So the placement of these objects needs to be quite particular. I do want the texture. I want the um, cylinder to rise above the skin of the gecko just a little bit, but I don't want it to interfere with those joints. So I'm going to go ahead and scoot some of these in one by one. And then when I'm completely finished with my project, then all of the cylinders that I did not need, I can go back in and I can just delete the ones that I don't need. Mrs. Culver, over here on the tail, I can see how some of those cylinders are not straight up and down. How did you achieve that, Mrs. Culver? Yes, around the perimeter of the shape, you'll notice uh, not only on the head region, but down over on the tail area, that I have some cylinders that are not straight up and down. And in order to achieve that, I still left the texture about the same size, but then I used that rotational feature that we learned um, in one of our previous sessions in order to achieve that. And then I was able to scoot that in. If it is too long, I can make it smaller or shorter so that it um, doesn't poke out the other side. And in this position, it's a little bit too far. So I'm going to use my keyboard. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here to that bottom corner. I don't want it to jump by one millimeter. I want it to, to jump by a 10th of a millimeter so that I have more power over that decision and how far it's gonna stick out from the project. Let me, Oh, you know what? The other thing I wanna do is I wanna rotate it just a little bit more in order to achieve um, a more a softer look on that edge. It would be unpleasant to spend a lot of time making a lot of adjustments over and over and over again. The beauty of the copy and paste feature is that you can copy something that's exactly at this measurement, at this angle. I'm gonna control C on my keyboard. I'm gonna do control V on my keyboard and now I have something that's exactly the same angle using my keyboard I can make microscopic adjustments if I wish in order to have some texture on this side of the gecko if I am completely satisfied with what I have done uh, let me get a top angle oh you can see how it's coming through the eyeball let me oops I moved that one 
I'm going to move the gecko over and then I'm going to rotate that work plane around. It's up to you if you want that um, the eyeball to not go all the way through. My other option is I can select this end and if I scoot it in, then it's not going to interfere with the eyeball. So rotating around the project carefully might be a wise idea so that you can evaluate if the position is correct. Friends, over in the top right-hand corner over here, there is a notes feature. If you click on the notes feature right here, you can leave notes for yourself so that if you are working on a design and you are not ready uh, to complete that specific item, but you want to come back to it, and you want to mention something to yourself. So the next time I come in and work on this project, then this is what I want to do. And you can leave those notes to yourself so that you pick up where you left off and that you don't forget any key ideas. You also have the ability to use that trash can. By clicking on the trash can right here, you can get rid of that note if you no longer need it. So feel free to use the notes feature if that's uh, an important tool for you. All right, team, please remember that once you have made any final adjustments to your project and there are extra shapes over here out on the fringe that you do not need, go ahead and delete those, please, and thank you. All right, friends, thank you so much for watching today's presentation and have a great day.